Hey friends, it's Mel. Welcome back to my kitchen. Welcome back to another week's worth of dinners. I hope that you have enjoyed this beautiful fall weather as much as I have. And if you're looking for some new dinner inspiration, you can just sit on back, relax, grab yourself a sweet tea, and let me do the cooking. Hopefully, I'll make some things that you like tonight. What better way to start a week's worth of meals than to make a box of this ranch and bacon suddenly salad. You know we love this stuff and it just will go with many things that we're eating this week. But I am making something called a hamburger pie. We're going to start out with a pound of ground beef. I've already drained the grease off of this and I'm going to add in some diced onions and some diced bell peppers and you'll see I've got both of these frozen that I just keep on hand at all times for quick and easy recipes like this or soups just anything so you're going to saute that up with your ground beef and get it you know thawed out from where they have been in the freezer into this mixture you're going to add about three-fourths of a teaspoon of sugar and a teaspoon of salt then you're going to put in one big tablespoon of chili powder and get all of that mixed in to your meat. If you want to make this in one dish, you want to be sure and use an oven safe skillet like cast iron or something like that. But I have made this before and just turned it all into a casserole dish or a pie plate and baked it. But into this skillet, since I can put it in the oven, I'm going to do everything in this. I am adding a can of diced tomatoes. You could use fresh if you had them. That'd be wonderful in the summer. And then you can use a can of mixed beans or kidney beans, whatever you like. Of course, I'm using pinto beans. And you're just going to get all of that heated up now. I had said the last time I made this that I would put tomato paste in this or maybe a little extra tomato sauce um, to give it just a little bit more liquid, but I didn't do that this time. I tweaked it just a little bit. Um, I will leave a link up in the cards and in the box for a video where I've made this before, but I used way too much cornbread on the top of it that time. So I think that's why I had thought that I would use a little more liquid, but I just left it as it was and then we're going to make the cornbread topping and I'm just mixing up a box of Jiffy Muffin Mix according to the directions on the side of the box. Once you get all that cornbread mixed up, you're just going to put it over the top of your meat and bean mixture, spread it out just a little bit the best you can. And then you're going to bake this at 400 degrees for 20 minutes. This is a delicious one dish meal. It's warm and cozy, perfect for fall. And look how pretty that bakes up. This recipe is actually passed down by my first grade teacher, Miss Leach, to her family and her granddaughter submitted this to one of our church cookbooks. So I will be sure and have this recipe linked down below in a pen for you. I'll just take a picture of it out of the cookbook and link it to my Pinterest board so you can be sure and have this. And I love this meal. I love beans and cornbread and this is just a little bit of different twist on it with the meat and the tomatoes and spices in it absolutely love this and I will link you another video where I have made it before and I also have a wonderful corn relish in that video that was delicious with this now you may remember me getting this irregular bacon at Aldi and I think I have shared over on Instagram when I used up the first pack of it it was really good and I'd had this pack in the freezer decided to pull it out this night and have some breakfast for dinner and I do just make my bacon in the oven look how pretty that irregular bacon looks not a thing in the world wrong with it it was just a couple of pieces were cut a little funky but anyway 
Um, I do bake mine in the oven about 10 or 15 minutes at 425 degrees. Here I'm just going to start the mixture for some French toast. Of course I just used eggs, milk, I put a little bit of vanilla in. And then a little bit of cinnamon too. Just going to whisk all that together and get it incorporated really well. And I am making French toast tonight out of some of that pumpkin cinnamon swirl bread that I have. I love that. Just toast it up with some butter and I especially love it in French toast. Had some frozen, frozen hash browns over there I'm cooking up on the side. And I just had to show you this long view of my kitchen here. Um, does anybody else have to have skillets and pans from one end of their kitchen to the other when they make breakfast? I don't know what it is about making breakfast, but I get it everywhere. Honestly, you know, I like to clean as I go, but it just doesn't always happen. This is real life. And I think that was worth seeing that um, my kitchen is not always clean and perfect when I'm cooking. And you'll notice the tongs I have laid out there that I forgot to use. I'm just using my hands like a mongrel to dip that French toast, frying it up in some butter over there on my cast iron griddle. I noticed those tongs about halfway through making this French toast. I forgot that I laid them out there so I would use them. But I just put them away. I thought I've already committed to using my fingers now so I just put them up. I scrambled some eggs up to go with this and there we go. We got French toast, some hash browns, scrambled eggs, bacon, and I had some big green grapes I had bought. These grapes were so big, the camera just does not do them justice. But that was definitely a yummy meal. Now I have a crock pot meal, and really it's just the sauce that you make in the crock pot. And you start out with some stewed tomatoes. I'm making half of this recipe. And I am chopping up those stewed tomatoes really little because my family is not big on like big pieces of stewed tomatoes. And then it calls for marinara sauce, some basil, it calls for oregano, which I did not have, so I just used a little bit more of the Italian seasoning that I put in. And some crushed red pepper flakes. Uh, just to your liking and you know I don't like things very very spicy and then a nice big tablespoon of Worcestershire sauce and what I think really makes this good is the beef bouillon then you're going to put also in a tablespoon of sugar to cut some of that acid and some salt and pepper and I have just sprayed my crock pot really well and then I am mixing all this up in the crock pot and like I said, this doesn't look like much, but I'm halving this recipe. And this is also a very beefy pasta dish. It doesn't have so much of like an Italian lasagna spaghetti flavor. It's very beefy. And here comes the beef part. It's just a pound of ground beef with some onions cooked up in it, and I did add some garlic. I'm going to drain all the grease off of that and then I'm just going to put it into my crock pot with the tomato and all of the seasonings that I've got mixed up in there. I'm going to stir that up really good, cut it on low and let it cook all day long. The longer the better. Mine cooked for about six or seven hours. And since I had a skillet out, I had a bag of frozen spinach, and I'm just going to go ahead and get my spinach a little thawed out, stick it in the refrigerator, and you're going to put that in the very last thing. Now look at that meat sauce, how thick it gets. Like I said, it's not a soupy sauce, it's a very meaty sauce. So after it's cooked, you're going to go in with about a fourth a cup of Parmesan cheese, and then about a cup of mozzarella cheese. And I have been boiling some pasta over on the stove. I've drained the bow ties off 
and I'm going to mix them and the cheese into this meat sauce. Look how yummy and melted that cheese is getting. And I'm just going to put the lid on it and then I actually cut it up on high and I let it sit for about 30 more minutes. Very last thing, after the 30 minutes is up, I'm going to bring that spinach that I have wilted and I'm just going to mix that into this. Everyone at my house loved this dish. It's not overly tomatoey. It's not overly cheesy. It's just a just a very hearty pasta dish. I served it up with some garlic bread that I just toasted up in the oven and a big old salad of course. Now the next day I just put some chicken in the crock pot and I have put them in from frozen and I've put four or five little pats of butter on there. I'm seasoning it with some salt and pepper and then I will use some garlic powder and some onion powder and I just let this cook on low all day long while I'm gone and the seasonings will just melt down into that chicken as it cooks down and it gives it the best flavor. So when I get home, you can see it's nice, moist, cooked, and brown. So I just remove that chicken from the crock pot and I'm just going to shred it all up. And this is more than enough that I'm going to need for tonight's dish, but I do this all the time. I'll cook a big batch of chicken up and you can just put it in the freezer and pull it out for anything. So, I don't think I told you what I'm making, but it's a chicken pot pie bubble up bake. Your mixture starts with a can of cream of chicken soup, and then you're going to use a cup of sour cream. Going to have a cup of shredded cheese, and then one and a half cups of vegetables. And I did have the frozen mixed vegetables. And this cooks up long enough that they really cook down good in here. You can put them right in from frozen. And then I just seasoned it up with some salt and pepper and some garlic powder. As always, I will have you links or recipes for all these things typed out in the description box below. I'll mix it up a little bit and then I'll start adding in my shredded chicken and I did use two cups of this shredded chicken and then I'm just going to incorporate it into the the mixture And of course, it's going to call for, I think it said a 12 ounce can. And the grands come with eight biscuits and that's 16 ounces. So I had to do a little math there on the fly. So I figured out if you take two biscuits away, you should have 12 ounces. So I'm just going to bake those up in a little pan. Somebody can have them for breakfast this week. And you're going to cut your remaining biscuits. And I do have them stacked. One, you know, one on top of the other. I've got two in each stack, but you're just going to cut them into fourths. And then you're just going to incorporate them into your chicken and veggie and soup mixture. And I just start out with about half of those little bits of biscuits and I'll get those stirred in because you want to be real gentle with this. You don't want to, you know, break your biscuits down. So I just do about half of them and mix it up and then I'll come back and put the other half in and mix them up. Of course, I'm going to spray a 9 by 13 pan. I spray everything, apparently. I didn't realize how much cooking spray I used until just here recently, but it's fine. I'm going to spray that 9 by 13 pan and turn out all of this mixture into it. 
and I just take this opportunity to kind of mix it up, make sure it's, you know, all incorporated well. You don't want any big clumps of biscuits together. You want them spread out, and then that's going to bake in a 350 degree oven for 35 to 45 minutes. I think mine was about 40, and there's my leftover chicken to go in the freezer. Look how beautiful and brown this came out. You can see it sizzling and bubbling down in there. This was delicious. I love this so much. I've only made, this is the second one of these bubble up casseroles I made. The first one was a taco one. And I'll link that video for you here in the cards and in the description box as well. But this was delicious. I had a really busy week this week so these meals you know we could eat on them for two nights some of them or for lunch the next day they all did double duty we've had some fall weather they were warm they were cozy they were satisfying now I'm gonna show you one night we had nachos this was more over the weekend you know I made tacos crunch wraps last week I always have a little leftover taco meat and beans, so we always throw some nachos out. One night I was gone and my husband made these ribs. I told him he could have leftovers or, you know, do whatever, get something. So he ran by Kroger's because I'm not a big rib fan. And he got these ribs and some tater tots and come home and cooked them up. And here's a picture of the ribs that he got. And look what a good deal he got on them. These things are, you know, the pre-cooked, you just heat them in the oven. But he got those for like half price. I want to make sure and say, if you haven't watched last week's What's for Dinner, be sure and go check that out because I announced the winner to my giveaway and she hasn't contacted me yet. If I don't hear from you this week, I'm going to have to move on to the backup winner. So anyway, if you make anything that I try this week, be sure and tag me with it on Instagram or let me know here. But I do love to hear if you find something new that your family likes as well. As always, I appreciate you so much for watching. I pray that you have a blessed week. And until I see you again, I send you love from my kitchen.